Got to, man. Got to bounce back. Shout out to my homie Keys, Xavier Keys, on the vocals on this. Okay. Honestly, they couldn't stop me if they wanted to. Got to get up, go out and get it, and that's what I'm going to do. I've been focused. I'm not hungry. Yo, I'm starving, dude. Grind mode with my team. We making these power moves. Honestly, they couldn't stop me if they wanted to. Gotta get up, go out and get it, and that's what I'm gonna do. I've been focused, I'm not hungry, you're gonna starve me, dude. In grind mode with my team, we making these power moves. Cause I ain't got no time to be wasting with all this music I'm making. Man, I'm tired of being impatient, so I keep making these moves here with my crew. Vow to myself to overstay true, so I don't care what nobody else do, I know why. Like an erection, bumps in the road, but nah, I ain't stressing. I don't work out, but homie, I'm flexing. Every time I get on the beat and I bless it, rise and shine, and I never let another come and stop my grind, cause I grind all night at the gig, no lie. Then it's back in the booth for some overtime. Come on. Nope. Mm -mm. Shout out to Miss Alma Ramos. Shout out to Miss B. Uh huh. I said, uh, hey, hey. Hey, my mom's told me to get them, so I don't care what y'all say. I just keep grinding. Yeah, I stay working, cause it's, you know why I'm, I said, uh, that's right. In the lab with a pen and a pad, I, I, let's ride. Make it look so easy, don't it make y'all mad? One thing I know, one thing is certain. I can't stop, won't stop, cause me and my team stay working One thing I know, one thing is certain Can't stop, won't stop, on the grind getting mine, I'm working No sleep, spit heat, killing these tracks And I'm not gonna stop till I'm up on top where I'm supposed to be Everywhere I go, I scream as Pete We're more than a crew, we're your family We're gonna try to get a couple Grammys G Have them sitting on top of the mantelpiece Thank God Go hard, they just mad cause I'm on my job But where I'm from is to the ground to starve I'm starving and I just can't do it Not having it, unthinkable So I turn in the stretch, I'm strong And now I can reach the unreachable Let's go Hey, trying to Yo, they I said I can't sit still I just laugh at y'all haters So uh, yeah Hey, 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 hey. hey. Mom told me so why don't let's go? I just keep yeah I stay cause it's you know I'm I said I that's right uh in the lab with a pen and a pad I I let's ride make it look so easy doesn't it make you mad one thing I know one thing is certain I can't stop won't stop. Cause me and my team stay working One thing I know One thing is certain Can't stop, won't stop On the ground, get in mind, I'm working Don't ever let anybody tell you That you can't get what you want Whatever you dreaming for, you get out there and you get it You make it happen Never mind the haters Real spill Cause I All day Always Get them Yes sir I'm grinding, stay working, hey, I said I, that's right, in the lab with a pen and a pad, I, let's ride, make it look so easy, don't it make you mad, one thing I know, one thing is certain, can't stop, won't stop, cause me and my team stay working, one thing I know, one thing is certain, can't stop, won't stop, on the ground, get in mind, I'm working. Got him. Yes, sir. Love him. Rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m.
like it. So I kind of like, you know, I kind of shy away from that. Yeah. You know, because you don't I, want to put them off on exercise and these kind of things permanently. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to do it because daddy made me do that plank for three minutes that time and exactly. 19, whatever, you know, or right. 2000, whatever. Yeah. Then he'll get married someday and his wife will ask him to plank. No! <laughs> he'll have to freak ruin their relationship. <laughs> right. Uh, good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is now 8.02. You heard us chatting. Riffing a little bit there. Uh, you are listening to Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Uh, we are here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, clap and give it up. Clap for me. Clap for our great guest. Clap for yourself. Yes, we can all do that. Clap for Monica and clap for the world. Uh, we have a great guest today. We have a dear friend of the show here to speak with us about uh, her initiative called uh, Cafe Talk and the uh, Icelandic language and culture meetup on meetup.com. And uh, we are here with Franca Liccioni. Good morning to you. Good morning. How's it Great. Everything is great. It's a beautiful day. And I'm looking forward to the Yeah, that's I'm real right. happy about that. And As we change the clocks, too, so we get additional sunlight. Oh, yes. On the evening side. That's yeah. what it is, right. Uh, so let me actually thank you very much for that segue. The weather, ladies and gentlemen, the weather is going to be very nice. Uh, the high today will be 51 degrees, or excuse me, 53 degrees at 1 p.m. Holy cow. Uh, tomorrow will be 37 with the high of 59, high of 66 on Wednesday. And Thursday looks like we got some showers, some rain uh, with the high of 61. So get ready for some good weather out there. Uh, you should have already shoveled all the remaining snow. If you live in my neighborhood, most likely us, we will start barbecuing or something like that. You know, these people. You know all right. How yeah, already. Can I come? I'll uh, bring something. Tell me what to bring. I'll be, I'll, I'm right there. Well, oh. Yep. Yeah, Side dishes. Oh, big dishes. Damn, it's on. <laughs> I'll make bread. I love it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll have to plan that. We'll have yeah. to plan that right okay. after the show, barbecue. Yep. Um, but good morning to all of you great people. Uh, we're going to learn some good stuff from, mm -hmm. from you today. And when the camera comes on, you're going to see Franca's great shirt, which I really like. I noticed as soon as she walked in here, you, you guys will see it too. Thank you. Uh, Monica, how are you feeling? I'm doing great today. Good. Um, so real quick, guys, got some news to talk about. And then we're going to get into our discussion. Monica, it qualifies as that thing, please, if you would. The Aurora City Council approved a new five-year agreement with the Maine Aurora Police Union. Alderman unanimously approved, unanimously, excuse me, approved the agreement with the Association of Professional Police Officers, which represents 297 patrol officers. Uh, the union ratified the agreement on March 4th, according to Carl, uh, Alderman Carl Frankel, the fifth ward, acting as the mayor pro tem in the absence of Richard Urban. Uh, he referred to the agreement as a, quote, very significant thing. Alex Alexandru, the city's chief management officer, said getting a five-year deal will run through 2024, uh, running through 2024 was the right thing to do. Um, and for 2020 and 2021, the wage increase is 2.5% and 2%, similar to what other bargaining units received in those years. For 2022 and 2023, the wage increase is a 3.5% a year. 2024, wage increase is 3%. A year. The city also agreed to reduce step movement from 10 to 8, which allows for quicker movement through the pay scale and positions. All right. We'll put the link uh, to this article in the chat for you guys to read later. Uh, but yeah, new contract is approved. All right. Awesome. So uh, now you're from New York originally. I am, I am. born okay. and raised. New York right. City. New Queens, York City. Berlin. Queens. Yeah. We talked about that. Uh, but we're going to talk about the Icelandic language and culture meetup. How did they start? It started because um, I'll rewind a little bit and okay. I'll keep it very succinct. I My first trip to Iceland was in 2005. Okay. And it was a trip and a, kind of like a thing for me that was years and years and years in the making. And maybe I would say since I was a child, right? But 2005 was when I first took my trip. And um, it was love at first sight. And I, was, I had been going back ever since, every year, right. you know, or when I could. And um, always in the winter time, because of course, that's the time to see the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis. Uh -huh. So, you know, you see, 
you go away from the city lights and you know hopefully they'll come out and they'll dance for you you know right and it's magical so anyway first trip was I fell in love and I was going back ever since and I believe it was about 2010 and I was sitting in my apartment on 77th Street and I was a member of this organization or this website meetup.com okay. and you know I'm a social person uh, sometimes my interests don't really jive with other people's but you can go on this kind of site and I was a member for years before that um, forget when I joined up I'm probably with them who knows since 2000 and seven maybe okay so what you do is you put your zip code in yeah. and you type in an interest and I had done many things in the past I was doing speed friending where you would go and you would work the room and you would move at five minute intervals and talk to people I did um, tango dancing so I went and learned how to tango I went a lot of dancing classes um, singing things all kinds of like artistic things mm -hmm. and Whatever. So in 2010, um, I was sitting there dreaming about Iceland. I, you know, my next trip back, or I had just come back, or whatever the case was, and I was trying to learn words. Hi, thank you. This, yes, no, goodbye, hello. Right. I opened up Meetup. I put in Iceland, and won't, wouldn't you know, it was a language course. And this was 2010 or 11, something like this. And I said, good grief. I said, am I seeing things? And so I went and I joined the group okay. so that, therefore, I could get the notices and the information about where they met. They were only one week into the course. Oh, wow. And I got myself in there right away, like toot sweet. And it was like, I think that was then January of 2011. Okay. So it's probably 11 years ago. And so we would meet all over Manhattan. And my teacher, who was from Iceland, I think we we first started in a place called Pearl Studios in Manhattan, and that's like a big building, something like this. And each room was you could rent studio space, so you would see the bar for the ballet dancers, you would see the pianos, you would hear the opera singers like down the hall. You would rent a space, and for whatever your purpose, you would use the space to practice, teach, right. learn anything. And we met there, and. Um, my teacher with her little whiteboard, we sat around a table. I think we started with about eight people. I jumped in, it was a week late, so I had some catching up to do in it. And I'm sitting there the and I'm like- The course was already going on a week before. It was only one week, so I had okay. only missed one session. And the thing is though, now I'm a language buff anyway, so, but when I got to Icelandic, what I didn't realize was that this language was something called a case language and very simply if anybody has ever studied German or spoken German you have to learn four cases it's a grammar thing mm -hmm. and the teacher and the two students and my dearest friend Tashi and I hope she's watching she was my classmate and that's how I met her and my dear friend Brian as well Tashi had background in German so when my teacher was saying the accusative case, the nominative case, the dative case, the genitive case, Tashi was just like boop, 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 and she was writing it down. And I'm like, I'm trying to not look like what is going on. Yeah. But I'm writing my notes. I went home and I figured it out. And what I had to do immediately was revisit my English grammar terminology because we know how to speak English. We know noun, verb, and subject, I'd hope. Right. But a lot of these other things, maybe we were taught one time, maybe in high school, maybe in college, but who knows this? So I had to go back and revisit that for my own survival purposes, because I said, this is, I'm gonna sink or swim here, but I'm gonna swim. Right. And so I did this. And I said, okay, and, and I was starting to, oh, okay, I see what happens now. And that's how I learned about how, um, nouns decline in this type of a language, a case language, and verbs are inflected, and all of the things, and the prepositions sometimes determines the case that you need to be using your pronouns and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not, I know I'm throwing a lot of grammar now, but when I talk to people, this I leave to the side. What I focus on, let's get talking. 
Let's just talk. Right. And when I feel there's like a, a segue or an end that I could just drop a little nugget of very simple, and I say, okay, here's an example of what we're going to be doing in the future down the road. And this makes it less terrifying to learn Icelandic because really the grammar can be beastly, mm -hmm. you know, and I try and do it in a way and teach it in a way as an American English speaking person who learned from an Icelander and who's now teaching it to other American English speaking people. And I remember the things and where I struggled. So I want to teach in my own style. Right. Because even being taught by an Icelander, which was great, and I benefited greatly from it, there were things that you don't even realize that there is a communication block. So my teacher would, wouldn't think of things to really explain to me, yet I'd be stuck on something, and here we had like a communication barrier. Uh -huh. And I wouldn't know what to ask because I wouldn't know that this was something I needed to know. She didn't teach the thing I thought that I needed to know because she would presume that I knew it. Right. So, and these things that I mean are what? Like this thing, like accusative. Maybe she thought, like, everybody knows nominative because in Iceland they grew up learning these things as part of their Icelandic grammar. Right. Do we really go that deep? I don't think so, Curtis. No, you know? I don't think so. I don't either. think so yeah. either. But I got a good lesson in English grammar and, you know, to prepare me to learn Icelandic and therefore, you know, being able to teach it down the road. So even learning from an Icelandic speaker, mm -hmm. um, it was still somewhat of a struggle. Difficult. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I had to really, really, like, I had a really. It was so frustrating. I I can't even tell you in the beginning until like I I passed that point and I had like a, aha, uh -huh, you know, okay, I get what I you know, and it became routine. And I can show you my phone. I have like. A dozen apps on my phone for the beginner up to the advanced to the native yeah, speaker right. because there's something like as I had mentioned to you before nouns decline in Icelandic which means in the four cases they may change they'll usually stay uh, in one form in the nominative case and then in the other four three cases that you need to they'll change or maybe not or maybe yes or whatever and there is a certain app or website that will help figure that out for you. It's kind of like a dictionary, but it's for these, it's a declension table or figure or outer. Right. Right? Um, now, you're Italian. I am. Do you speak Italian? I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, you speak Italian. You speak Spanish. Yes. You speak Icelandic. French. And French. Yeah. Any other languages? I am, in my book, I'm doing Duolingo. I... I'm hooked on this Turkish like soap opera on Netflix, so I started doing Duolingo Turkish. Okay. And because I love Squid Game, like everybody loved Squid Game, I started learning, teaching myself like the Korean um, dialect letters. Letter, and you start okay. with yeah. the and the sounds and everything. And I have a Korean friend that I met, Susan, and she's helping me. Or she looked at it and she said, "Oh, this is great," you know. So. It's just stuff to keep me busy. I just love languages, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, it's 8.15 a.m. Good morning to all of you great people. Uh, we're going to learn language together here, uh, hopefully. I, I do want to get some words under my belt for this uh, for this great episode. Oh, great. How y'all doing at home? Hello, there you are. You're tuning in. Uh, good morning, Victoria Hyla Maldonado, Maria Chirito, Aisha Saxon. Coyote Duran says good morning. As our guest today is a language buff, I'd like to know if she's a polyglot, which makes language absorption simpler. Are you a polyglot? I am a polyglot, and in fact, that is such a great word and a great comment because in the meetup group, when you search for things of interest... Monica's going to put that in the chat. Oh, one of my keywords... Of course, with Icelandic being number one, like if you're searching Icelandic, the other one is actually polyglot. So for somebody like this gentleman that may have an interest in people who are polyglots, or mm -hmm. he himself would like to become one, if he searched polyglot, 
it might bring me up. All right, all right. Yep. Uh, Josue Pais, Jennifer Ryan Mateson, Joe Jackson, good morning. And Josie Mendoza-Geller, good morning from Carbondale. Wow. Johnny Felix and Norma Peterson are here too. Good morning to good you guys. Morning. Carbondale, Illinois. Um, so, coffee, coffee Talk yep. at Java Plus. Yep. Now, this is the going to be the second one yes. of these, okay? Yes. The first was in February that you did. Yes. So we'll read this to the folks because this is news. Uh, join uh, join Franca here for Coffee Talk at Java Plus, where the plus means learning how to order coffee in Icelandic. Thursday, March 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Franca will be there discussing your experiences traveling to Iceland. Journey of learning the Icelandic language, the birth of the Icelandic language, and cultural meetup, and a mini lesson on how to order coffee in Ic in Icelandic. Um, the birth of the Icelandic language. What's the birth of it? We're going the birth back. of this That's yeah. history, right there. Well, of, of actually just the Icelandic language and culture meetup. So, okay. where we left off before was my personal journey learning Icelandic. So. The birth of this group that people have joined, and I have now, I'm proud to say, 600, around 600 members. I may have just hit that 600 member okay, mark. Okay, congrats. Thank you. 600 members. Thank Hi. you. We'd like to increase that, so please join. And, you know, and then you could take all of these, like, things and language things, all centered around Iceland. Okay. And so I... As I had mentioned, I was a member of Meetup and, you know, finding activities for myself. Right. And that's how I found my language group. And in 2015, so now I have about five years under my belt of, of Icelandic study. And I said, you know what? In New York City, there is really no language community for support in learning because I believe hmm. in immersion right? right and when you learn a language you should be watching the movies you should be reading as whatever you can you should be listening to the radio you should be also taking your lessons but all those other things are of support and we didn't have that so I decided to create it because my hope in creating it was that I wanted people to join with an interest in the language, maybe Icelanders in New York, maybe people who also studying like me. And it was a place where I said, come, ask the questions that you're afraid to hmm. raise your hand and ask. Let's practice. I don't care how bad you think you are. It is never bad, in my opinion, to speak a language or to try and stumble or mess up a word because you know what? You're trying and the effort is in communicating with another person right. who cannot understand you. Um, is there a big Icelandic community in New York? Yeah, okay. there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are, are there any sister cities in America? Yes. I think, now I don't want to be mistaken, I'm going to say they're in South Dakota, they're in Minneapolis or Minnesota. Okay. And I, I don't want to misquote like this. Sure. They're in Canada um, because I'm also connected to certain, you know, or I share events through like in Toronto the Icelandic and and you want to know something Curtis what I did not know until I got here and they are lovely lovely people they reached out to me and I said hot diggity there is icelandchicago.org can you believe it oh icelandchicago.org yes interesting yes. oh the things you find on the internet right well they are there and going strong and what they do is they have language chats in Chicago uh, on Thursdays and you can say well I'll be representing Arabic I'll be representing this or that or the other and so he reached out and I didn't quite know what it was at the time his events and I said well I would love to maybe Present, you know, because Icelandic, you know, everybody thinks, what? I said, I'd love to maybe have a table if anybody was interested in Icelandic. He said, yes, come on. I said, yay. Maybe I found my tribe here. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, and that's in Chicago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're in Chicago. I'd have to find or remember they get their gatherings are in a big spot with long wooden tables. Okay. And everybody's there speaking everything, but they have it. You know who's got this who's got that language yeah. and I've yet to bring my Icelandic it's just I was kind of busy preparing for these things but I told 
Ricky, I said, I'm coming. I'm coming. He said, we can't wait. Yeah, if we can, uh, well, if we can shout that out. Sure. Give that some steam. That'd sure. be great. I asked him actually before if it would be okay to mention. He said, you can certainly mention IcelandChicago.org. IcelandChicago.org. Okay. Um, so with the, with the sister cities and everything and um, the fact that New York has a big Icelandic population, um, what's been some of the some of the human elements like have so you mentioned the your teacher yeah but and you go to Iceland yeah. um, do you ever find yourself meeting more Iceland besides the meetup.com mm -hmm. like you ever surprised when people come out or ask you to speak or do you hear the language spoken in the grocery store for example one time on the subway one time on the subway back back home in New York City so I was riding the subway and these they must have been tourists and I'm sitting there doing my thing, and by the grace of God, I didn't have my earbuds in, listening to God knows what with my head, who knows where. <laughs> and so, by the grace of God, and I'm sitting there, just, you know, doing my, I'm in my zone, and all of a sudden, doo -doo -doo, like my spidey sense went off. I said, wait, I hear it, I hear it, and my head went like this. It was like a smoke alarm. And wouldn't you know, like maybe two people down from me speaking Icelandic. They were tourists. Why not? It's New York City, right. right? So to make them feel welcome, I went up to them and I tapped them and I asked them, you know, are you from Iceland in Icelandic? My name is Franca in Icelandic. And by the by the time you knew it, you know, like the doors had opened, you know, New York City is fast and off I went and but I was hoping that I, I left them with like happy feeling like wow you know that's nice welcome that's to nice. new york so i did have it one experience like that okay uh teach peace teach peace see i told you guys you viewers at home that you would like that awesome shirt uh yeah. teach peace that's a good message to start off the week with um mm -hmm. and a good message to start the day off with yeah. too yeah we have to teach peace we do i mean you're doing it through language but many people are doing it in different ways so that's a that's a very Accurate shirt. Yeah. Um, all right. So the time is 823. Monica, would you please, when you're done with your water, you got to hydrate. Ladies, ladies, drink your water, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's all of you. And have your lozenges. And have your, we got lozenges here too. We do. We got. Courtesy the, of Frog. Yeah, we got Halls. Yeah, we got Halls <laughs> lozenges. We don't just have cough drops. No. Mm -mm, we have lozenges. lozenges. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Monica, if you be so kind, take us to a commercial. Give us uh, three joints, three pieces of news. Phil Kaufman, good morning to you. Phil Nucchio, it's at a brewery on the north side. Thank you, Phil. Uh, some news, Monica, thank you. Cool. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Here are your local headlines. Real news, real people, real stories, 100% Aurora. <laughs> Don't forget to please subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all of our content. Here you can also watch all of our interviews and receive notifications when we go live. The Illinois Homeowner Assistance Fund Program provides direct financial assistance to prevent mortgage delinquencies, defaults, displacements, and foreclosures for income-eligible homeowners experiencing pandemic-related hardships. Starting in April 22, I mean, starting in April 2022. Yeah, I said it correctly. Yeah, that that works. Okay. Yeah, it flowed good. Yeah, 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 yeah. right, right. It wasn't right. Like April 2002. Great. Right. Um, the state will begin accepting applications from homeowners for grants of up to $30,000 to eliminate or reduce past due mortgage and property tax payments. Find out if you're eligible for up to $30,000 in homeowner assistance by clicking the link that I'll be sharing with you all in our chat. March 26th from 10 to 11.30 a.m., our Friends of the Neighbor Project and BMO Harris Bank will be hosting a great home buyer education seminar in both English and Spanish. The home buyer team will walk you through the steps of the home buying process and learn about down payments, down payment assistance and other programs. This will take place at the Prisco Community Center located at 150 West Illinois Avenue. This event is free and open to the public. For more information, contact Jaria at 331-300-3566. All right. Thank you very much, Monica. Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre, good morning to you. Davi Samantha Danner, good morning to you, dear friend. Happy Monday to you. Phil Nuccio, Goldan Dagen. Golden Dagen. Good morning. That's how you say it. How you say it? Yeah, Golden Dagen. 
Golden Dying. Yo. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I just right. left. I just left. Awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. See? Mm -hmm. That's what you think I slammed it <laughs> Well, you're going to be too by the time we finish oh, today. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he, he mentioned something here that I want to... Uh, thank you, Phil. It's exciting seeing Franca Liccioni on the podcast. She's a wonderful teacher and has taught me so much. Thank you very oh much God. for that, Phil. <laughs> Judge Bianca Camargo is here. Good morning. Learning different languages is so enriching because it gives you different ways of thinking uh, of the varieties of culture. That's from uh, Davi Samantha Danner. Thank you very much. So true. And Phil said the place we're talking about is called the Language Cafe Meetup yes. is at Revolting Brewery, 3340 North Kedzie. I believe so. I won't. I won't okay. until I look. But I, I think he's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yolanda Dunn is here. Good morning, Leo Zarco. What's up, sir? And uh, Tom Hebert. Good morning. All right. So, uh, got the talk. Yep. Let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, let's dig into a little bit more. So, got the talk is literally coffee talk. Yeah. Okay. That's very easy. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that we will learn? when we go to a coffee talk with Franca? Well. Do you start with the hard stuff at the very first day? Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> it's like you do taxes in Nay, 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 <laughs> nay, which is no. Okay. And I said, nay, 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 nay. 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 Right. What we do is we just start talking. And actually, what I do first, and even Phil could tell you, that I start with sounds. Okay. And I start with the vowels. And really, it's a, it's a good 20 minutes of going over sounds because I believe that the vowels, and they're important in Icelandic, the vowels shape, they, they, they're the shape of the word, right. if that makes sense. Whereas consonants are sounds, and we can make them ba, pa, ta, na, l, whatever the consonant is, and we can drop those in, right? But if we don't know how to say our vowel sounds, o, u, y, which is a vowel in Icelandic, y, and um, yeah, then we not, we're not going to be able to say the words, or the words are going to be confusing when you're looking them at them on the paper. So I do this first, so then when they see the word, it's really not as intimidating. Okay. And if you would like, the gift that I brought for you is your own How to Produce the Sounds in Icelandic and a Mini Grammar. I have for you, if you ever wanted to learn Icelandic, this is chapter one, lesson one. Hi, how oh, are you? Thank you. Here is an Icelandic cheat sheet. And there's some, all kinds of goodies in there tucked oh, in. Oh, wow. Like, here's another, now here is actually the alphabet, how it is sounded out. And I try to reproduce it here in a user-friendly way. But, you know, I call things from many different sources, my own spin on things. And there's a lot of wonderful, this is from um, the textbook that I learned as a student, very okay. first. And, you know, that I ordered it um, from Amazon.com, I believe. Okay. But here you go. Thank you. And yesterday, as luck would have it, my business cards, so here you go, with all of my contact information. If you look at the back of the business card, it says, I speak Icelandic. What's your superpower? Very nice. <laughs> very cool, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very cool. This is awesome. Yeah, so that's a gift for you. So, of course, I don't want to throw a lot at somebody without giving them the resources because you have to have the resources to back it up, right? And I try to do it, and I don't want to say simply, I want to do it in a way that somebody won't have this block with something so new and so different. Right. So I want to make it, at, like I said, as user-friendly as possible. So uh, English and Icelandic are more closely related than you might think. In fact, Old English uses even uses the, I don't know what these characters are. Ev. Ev. Yeah. yeah. They're all in here. So oh. this is, we can all say that, you could say the alphabet and... Um, all these kind of things. I actually have something here. If you want to, we can. Ah. The alphabet goes like this. Here you go. Okay. And there are those letters right there. Oh, no, no, it. no. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I need some more coffee on this. I show, got you. Yeah. I got you. Mm. We got all the coffee we need right yep. here, sitting in this chair. <laughs> this is uh, okay. Well, I see. Looks like a a bag is a tasca. Let me see if it... Tasca. 
Tasca, yeah. Yeah. This is uh And I am this. Kennedy. 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 Yeah. And in Icelandic, very easy. Well, I, I think the easiest thing that you can remember is that the accent will always be on the first syllable, no matter what word it is. Okay. So Kennedy. And you are Thu Ert Nemandi. You're a student. Yeah, here it is right here. Thuart, Thuart Nemendi. Yeah, oh, flat. Yes, I this Give it let. up. Give it awesome. Up. Give it up. You're a great teacher. Thank um, you. <laughs> so I'm going to take this stuff home and I think I'll give myself. Well, Monica will learn this too. We, we, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Okay. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. We'll, we'll see if we can check in with you, bring some coffee to one of these and yeah. uh, learn a little bit. I'd like to say a sentence. I'd like to get there. I'd like to be able to speak a sentence. Here you go. If you would like to say a sentence, mm -hmm. I'll give you the perfect sentence. And for all of you listeners and viewers out there, if you know any Icelandic, you can put that in the chat. Okay. Hello, Egheti Anna. Hello, Egheti Anna. Ah, Egheti Anna. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, hello, Heter. Who? Kvad. Heiter tu. Yeg heiti Franka. Uh -huh. Fad heiter tu. What's your name? Yo. Yo. Ladies and gentlemen. This. <laughs> this is it, ladies there and gentlemen. There was no prep, though. I want to say. Right. Hand, hand to God. There was no preparation in this. I, I swear. I swear on my cats. There was nothing. Nothing. Right. This is the first time he's seen this. I told him, I said, I, I'll wait till we're right. live and then I'll give this to you. This is not like the magic trick where they tell you, I'm no, going to call you. No, 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 none of that. <laughs> is there somebody in the audience? You! <laughs> um, this is very good. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. Okay, I can look at this forever. Sure. Um, but I want to know, um, so Iceland, what's it What's it like? What's Iceland like for the for those of us who have not yet been What's it like? Mm -hmm. It's magic. It's magic. Okay. And they call it the land of fire and ice because it's a very new country, but somehow it has like this ancient feel, like when we think of the Vikings and, and, and this kind of thing. They came to Iceland, and it was 894 mm -hmm. when they first came. And was that Leif Erikson? Leif Erikson. Come yeah. on. <laughs> None of you knew I knew the history like that. But how do you say pronounce it correctly? Lever Erickson. Lever X Erickson. Yo, and they have a big statue of him by their big church. And Lever Erickson is son of Eric hmm. the Red. Eric the Red, right. Now, in Iceland, why do we have these kind of names? But, well, there's a little secret to their naming system, which is patronymic. So therefore, my name, in if I were born in Icelandic, in, in Iceland, my dad's name is Frank. I'm Franka. My Icelandic name would be Franka, daughter of Frank. In Icelandic, Franka, Frank's daughter. Yo, your dad, let's say your dad is Curtis as well. Rufus. Rufus. So your name, if you were born in Iceland, would be Curtis Rufusson, the Ooh. son of Rufus. Uh -huh. Oh, everybody got to chill. I know you at home like, damn, son of Rufus. That's, I like that. Rufusson. Is my dad in the chat today? Is, it, is dad there? No, he's not. Well, dad, you should have tuned in today. But, he but tunes in every now and then. Rufus, <laughs> Mr. Rufus, would be named something different because of who his, his dad, dad was, right? Yeah. So that's why in the phone book, you're you're alphabetized by first name because everybody is son of something or daughter of something. So you look up the person's first name. So I want to find Curtis in Iceland. I'm not going to look up Rufus, son. I'm going to look up Curtis. Son of Rufus. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And that's called patronymic system. So me, because dad is Frank, I'm <clears throat> Franka, Frank's daughter. Right. So Björk, the singer Björk mm -hmm. in English, Björk, Guzman's daughter. That's Guzman? her full name. Okay. She has a last name like everybody else. You know, she dropped it like Cher, whatever. 
but that's yeah. yeah Bjork that's right she was at she is Icelandic yeah yeah what was yeah. her song I used to like her she had plenty she did but mm -hmm. there was one song what's anybody put that in the chat that that song that Bjork oh man I can't think of it but I love that song I've seen her live and I'm still hoping to bump into her in Reykjavik right yeah. What's Reykjavik? The capital of Iceland. Oh. Reykjavik, which means, if you break it down, Smoky Bay. Smoky Bay. So it's the city in the Smoky Bay. So in Icelandic, you have a lot of compound words mm -hmm. for things. And so they consider Icelandic a dead language. And what does that mean? That means, so in English, We've added words, and our language is evolving and growing and changing. And our dictionary probably even has Google as an actual, you know, a, you know, a word that's listed in the dictionary. Or Xerox. Let's go back a ways, right? Yeah. Oh. So throwback. Icelandic doesn't do that. They work with the words that they have, and when they need to form a word, let's say new technology comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Um. They make compound words. So these words sometimes look very daunting, very, you know, very frightening. But really, if you look and you, and I teach you, like, look, there's three words in one. Right. Here's an example. In Iceland, they don't have subways, but we do in New York. But, of course, everybody has to have a word for a subway. So the word for a subway in Icelandic is under, earth, train. And it's one big long word. And people look at this like, oh my God, how am I going to say this? No, no, no. I got you. Nevan yardar lest. Nevan yardar lest. Oh, that's the subway. Nevan yardar lest. Under, Under earth, earth train. train. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Phil gave us, let me see. Oh, so quiet. Thank you, Phil. Oh, so quiet. Um, that's one of them. Yeg elska dig. I love you. Yes, Kathig. Um, now, I, I hope that I'm, I'm pronouncing it at least somewhat You are. Coherently. You are. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying not to match. And you didn't it. even have that vowel lesson, so you're doing great. And uh, yeah. there's two sets of vowels. One has the accent and one does not. So, like, yig, Elskathig, mm -hmm. I love you. Ye is an E with an accent. But E without an accent is E. Pure and simple E. Is Iceland in the EU? No. No? No, because they don't have the euro. So it's still the 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 krona. Yo, oh, wow. Yo, krona. Yo. Wow. Maybe when I go to Iceland, who knows? I might, uh, you know, might you see can, me, see with the prime minister. Yes, thank you, prime minister. You come, you come. I'm making a group trip, and that's one of my future goals for this group. I'm going to lead like a, a speaking walking tour. Okay. And so whatever we learn, I'm going to take you guys to Iceland with me, and I'm going to get us a group break. This is like our future plan. And so funny you said that. So really, that's what I would like to do because then you get to use it. And talk about the prime minister. Let me tell you, walking around Iceland, everybody's on a first name basis. I have met the mayor of Reykjavik. I have a photo. That's in my meetup group of me and Jongna. <laughs> <laughs> I met the first lady, dude. Really? Yeah. And uh, she's actually uh, American or Canadian, I think. And she married the Icelandic guy president of Iceland, the White House is right there right. in walking. And you see people, and they're, they're a different kind of mentality there. They're very, very progressive. They were one of the first people pushing for women's rights and everybody's rights. And I believe that they were one of the first people to open up their doors, so to speak, to the Syrians when there mm -hmm. was a crisis. You right. know. And they're just this kind of people. So... You're on a first name basis there. And you could very well bump into the president and just meet like some heavy hitters there. You won't even know it and they won't even mind that you're there chilling and chatting with them by right. their first name. And that's how it is. Okay. Yep. Check that out. Um, so, Monica, the time is now 840. Monica, take me to a commercial real quick uh, and then we will get back here to our discussion. I got a couple more quick pieces of news for these people. Oh, uh, and Josie says Norwegian naming is similar. Oh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that was patronymic. 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 Okay. All right, guys. Real quick, well, before we get back to our conversation here, i got a couple of great pieces of information for you. Movies at a museum and at Monday Park. Sponsored by AuroraDowntown.org. You can be a star sponsor. Sponsor Aurora Downtown's outdoor movie series in the summer. Um, help support 
our free summer movie series at the Aurora Regional Fire Museum and Monday Park at the venue. There's three different sponsor levels, popcorn sponsor, star sponsor, and candy sponsor. Uh, you can get to know those by going to auroradowntown.org. Let them know you heard about it here. All right, and then the next thing that's taking place is the March Social Justice Meeting, Monday uh, the 21st at 5 p.m. This is going to be virtually via Zoom, hosted by the Office of State Representative Barbara Hernandez. Join State Rep Hernandez and Warehouse Workers for Justice to learn about the work the WWJ does at the intersection of labor and environmental justice. This is very important, you guys. Once again, that starts at 5 p.m. Monday, March 21st to register. Uh, we posted this, we shared it, and it's uh, on Facebook. Okay. All right. So um, we've got language. Yes. We've got heteronymic naming. Uh, now, what do they have in Iceland? Different pastries, different things like that. How's the Kleiner. food there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and this is the, uh, it's sort of like our cruller. Mm -hmm. So it's a fried dough. I think every culture has like a fried dough. Yeah. And maybe powdered sugar or something right. like that. They also have... Uh, um, a pancake, like pundakukur, and it's sort of like a crepe. And then you roll this up, and you can, and then you roll it in like uh, granulated sugar. Mm -hmm. And the other ones you can put like cream, whipped cream with strawberry jam. And it's oh my gosh, it's so great. So the kleiner, you know, it's a traditional thing, so that you would eat in Iceland. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, do you do any cooking? I, I do. Think? Oh, yes, okay. yes. When I was home in New York, um, me and my my buddies that were equally as you know mad about Iceland as I am, uh, I would host these parties and I would call them Icelandic potlucks, and they would have a different theme. Okay. So the foods, <laughs> everybody would bring a dish, and I made plukfiskur, which is like a fish stew. Okay. I made kjutsupa which is a meat soup I have made um, and then a friend of mine Haldra she was the one that came and, and brought the pudding cooker okay and uh, my friend Brian Tashi was there my friend Regina was there my friend Alan and we were all language students so I would make these things where everybody would bring something and I wouldn't and I wouldn't make it complicated like if you could only bring a vegetable plate we eat vegetables in Iceland right, right. come join me and this would be in my home and uh, so I would have, yes, Icelandic potlucks. And the theme would be Icelandic food. And you would do your best. And some of my friends, I tell you, they knocked it out of the park. Good. And my friend Tashi, my, my, my bestie, she would bring the Icelandic beer. Or is it lager or ale or whatever? Einstuk. Einstuk? Yeah. And okay. you can get that, I think, in Whole Foods. Really? Yeah. Oh. You can get a lot of things in Whole Foods. You'd be surprised. At one time, I believe you could still get the hot dogs, Pilser, and uh, I just bought them online and I shipped them to a friend of mine back home. He's like my brother, Ralph, and uh, he's my best friend, quote, adopted brother and sister. And his birthday was the end of January, so I ordered for him the whole... How nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How nice. Yeah. Um, now, the, the flag of Iceland, yes. what's the history of the flag? I'm not sure, but um, I think, you know, like with most flags, even the American flag, like every color represents something else. Right. Maybe the blue is the water, maybe the red is the blood that was shed, who knows, yeah. but yeah. yeah, it's pretty simple. And a lot of the flag, the flags of the Nordic countries, if you look at them, they have this color background mm -hmm. and they have a this kind of a cross. In Finland, when I was in Finland, it's white with blue. Right. Denmark is red with white. Norway, I think, is Iceland in reverse. I think it's red with, you know, with the but blue you get cross. that right. right. And yep. but you and what am I missing? And Iceland, Iceland, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, sweet. Of course, we know IKEA, blue right. and yellow. Yep. Right. That's right. Yep. Um, you know your flags. Well, we know our flags, right? We hey. Do know it. Um, so flags. I. The flag is very recognized as all the flags. Right? Yeah, for the Nordic countries. Right. Yeah. Um, so, how do you order coffee? Okay. What do, you, what do we say? Well, if well, you can go into a shop in Iceland 
and you walk up to the counter or you sit down. Let's say you sit down here and the, the waiter comes over or the waitress comes over and says to you, Mao Yig, Yo Thier Coffee? May I offer you coffee? Uh, yeah. Yao? Yao. Tak. Tak. Yes, thank you. Yes, thanks. Yao tak. Yeah, or okay. ne tak. No thanks. No. Right. Yeah. But I do want coffee, so I would say <clears throat> yao tak. Okay, and I would then ask you, wilt milk and the sugar? With milk and sugar? Do you want milk or sugar? Yao. Yao. Or you could say, but a small milk tak. Just a little milk. Bara? Bara? Smau. Smau. Milk. Milk. Tak. Tak. Yep. All right. Um, I can't read this. Which but uh, let's keep. This <laughs> 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 brother's trying, though, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Let me see what you can't read. Let me see. No, it's, a, it, it's his first page. Um, oh, Philip yeah. already said that. Remember Phil Nuccio that, that piped in before and he right. said golden die? Right, okay. That's yeah, the good did. morning. That's the good morning part. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, how do I order a pastry? Like, I like those pastries over there. I would like one. Oh, yeah, I love kleiner. You know, I'm going to have, and I have it all written here, like if you were going to be in the class. Yeah, I love I'm going to get. So here, I'll share this with you. Ooh. See this? This bless, is what, bless. Bless, bless. Bye bye. Wow. Tak sumulet. Okay. When we say tak, we say thank you. The full thing is uh takfir. Takfir. Right. Thank you for. Thanks for. And what they say in Iceland, they kind of say, it's not really a you're welcome, but they say thank you likewise. The word for likewise is sumule this. So when you're in a shop, Sumulete. you say thank you, they give you something, you say thank you, they say, so you say tak, they say tak sumuletis, so it's thank you likewise. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to have a Swiss mocha minus the cream. Yeah, want to try that one? Yeah, I'll try me? that. Yeah, okay. I, you know what, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I got this. Yo. Move over, Leif Erickson. Move over. All right, uh, let's try it. Eh, no, egg, <coughs> itla, ad, fa, swiss, mocha, minus, yes. rejomi. Keep going, keep going. Let me see. Mm. <coughs> I'm going to have another lozenge because, you know, when we use our voices a lot. So, eh, la fao, where's that? Oh, yes, la fao, swiss, mocha, minus, rioni. Riomi. 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 Yeah, Ooh. flood. I like that name. Riomi. Yeah, maybe I want to change my name to Riomi. Right. Or Rioma, you know? Interesting. Okay, <coughs> now then one after that. Para tiu dropa. Mm. Well, let me tell you. Now you're drinking your coffee, right? You have your coffee over there. And the waiter comes around and asks you... You know, can I offer you like more coffee, whatever? You could say, just 10 drops. And that is a phrase. You know, in English, what we would say, oh, just a splash, but you really want a full cup? It's the same thing. Just 10 drops. Aha. Uh huh. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Um, Mig Langar. Yo, I want. I want. Miglangar. Miglangar. Ad draka. Ad draka. Draka. And there's sort of a breathy thing. There's like, like guttural stops and there's out breaths and mm -hmm. in breaths. You know, it's, when you listen to Icelandic, you'll know what I mean. But, the, you know, I'm just saying, if you hear me doing like a thing like, eh, eh, or something like that, it's the way of pronouncing in the true form. This is the only show, ladies and gentlemen, where you can learn Icelandic. Yes. From the comfort of your own home or mm -hmm. your home office here on Good Morning Aurora. See, this is... Nothing like it. Nothing like it. So, uh, the next... So, my name, we 
it's patr it's patronymic. Yes. But um, do all of the names? I, I'm sorry if you covered this already. Do the names end in vowels? What the what, names? What was the have significance to do. of? Right. There is. <sighs> Get this, there is Icelandic naming committee, which the Icelanders are trying to kind of get rid of. But when you have a baby in Iceland, mm -hmm. your first name has to be approved, an approved name by the committee. And why? Because it has to follow the grammatical rules of Icelandic. So I guess the name being a noun, if it does not decline properly, you can't name your kid that. So. My name, Franca, um, is only Franca in that nominative case. I said there were four cases. In every other case, like if you're going to say, I'm going to go see Franca, you're going to go see Franke, F-R-O with umla N-K-U. Okay. So it's F-R-A-N-K-A. -A. In Icelandic, I would use a K instead of a C. And only I'm Franca in the nominative case. And then my name changes. So, and it happens with other names as well. Some names, most names don't, but some some names do, or maybe have to. I don't know. Some names do, some names don't. And if your name is not one of these names that can do this and follow the grammatical rules, mm -hmm. you can't name your kid that. What's the penalty if you did name your kid that? Probably like other countries, like maybe you couldn't get documents or right. birth certificates or things like that but i think somebody tried good grief i want to say henrietta or something it was some henrietta name, something like <laughs> that. i don't know i'm just throwing it out there but they said no they shut it down yo yeah. they said no uh uh henrietta and, I'm the, and they're an like i want to name. name my kid what i want to name my kid but yeah they're trying to at the same time they're trying not to lose the language there's about three, maybe now about 330,000 people that live in Iceland with 120,000, maybe more, rough estimate, living in the capital, Reykjavik. And they want to hold on to their language, mm -hmm. you know. And the thing is that language has remained unchanged practically since the Vikings came. So if you go to the Saga Museum, Saga story, mm -hmm. if you go to the Saga Museums, this is what the Vikings wrote, the people wrote back then. We had like... You know, there's oral tradition, there's written tradition. So we have these sagas, right? The modern Icelanders today can read those sagas with really no difficulty. However, we could not read Beowulf in the original text. We couldn't read Chaucer. We couldn't read these right. old. It, it's like, what is this? They can. Shout and, out to Leif Erikson. Or <laughs> how do you pronounce it? Leifur Erikson. Yo. Leifur Erikson. Yo, yo, yo. How they massacred his name in, in American, right? It, now, uh, right? That's what they're teaching us. Just say, just say, leaf. No. Now it's yeah, now. I know. How it's like it kills wet. a little piece of my heart every time I hear yeah. it. You know, what I mean? and so I, you know, try and keep labor alive. Yeah. The name, you know, everybody should have their names pronounced right. No, I. Agree. I don't like being called Franca because it's not. And you've always pronounced my name correctly. I was like, I was impressed the first time you said my name. I don't know. I made some. I said a good morning or something, and I said, "Yo, this guy, you know, he's got, he probably has some yeah, language it. aptitude yeah, there." Yeah, trying you know? to. You gotta. I I appreciate people's names, and uh, you know, I've been blessed to meet a lot of different people and a lot of different nationalities and things like yeah. that. I I try to. Yeah, I, I try to pronounce it. You, you know? do, and I think with ethnic names, sometimes people don't feel that they need to try. Right. And that's a sad thing to me. It's an American thing. It's an American it, it thing. Is. It shouldn't it's, be. Yeah, it is. Um, Americans will, we, no matter what it looks like, we will try to, we'll try to slang it out and make it some cool little, you know. I, it's, There's beauty in yeah, tradition. Yeah, that is sad. In tradition, like, traditional things should be respected. And in Icelandic, they want to keep the and so that's what i try and do too like i say like my i'm building a website and my tagline is you know keeping the icelandic language alive one student at a time nice yeah um what can america learn from iceland well you know they're very creative people and they live remotely mm -hmm. like in a remote in the sense not in the technological sense but in the geographical sense they right. are remote and 
they survive and they know how to survive. They survive on an island that is so set apart from people and it's about community. And if they didn't have community, how would you survive? When you have one house, you know, a turf house in the mountains and then the winter comes, you need to have community. You need to know your neighbors because right. you will not survive in a climate and, you know, in a place like this. And if you need help, how are you going to get help? Who's right. going to help you? And then the holidays come. And the, so there's this kind of, there's a community. And it goes back, I think, personally, to the original settlers. Like, this is how you would survive, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, the time is 8.57 a.m. You guys have been listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast, the only place outside of Iceland or Icelandicmeetup.com. Yeah. Where you will hear such fantastic knowledge this knowledge. early in the morning. Yes, we love knowledge. So we, we do. We love knowledge. So, um, yikes! Time has oh, just dear. E elipsed this. Um, so the the show ends on a positive note. Yes. What is your message? Wait, first before we get to that. Yes. Let me plug one more time. Okay. Um, Thursday the twenty fourth of this month is the next. Coffee Talk at Java Plus, 1677 Montgomery Road here in Aurora from 6 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, Franca will be there explaining the experiences of traveling to Iceland, the journey of learning the Icelandic language, the birth of Icelandic language and culture meetup, and a mini lesson on how to order yeah. uh, coffee in Icelandic. Yeah. And the pastries there are great. Yes. So want to plug that in yes, yes. Uh, one more time. Yes. Uh, the show ends on a positive note. What is your message today for our great listeners? You know, I always say, I put this question to people, and if I were asked the same question, somebody says to you, Curtis, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And I have always, always answered that question by saying, if I could have one superpower, and this is the truth from my heart, it would be to be able to speak, read, and write in every language in the, in the world, every indigenous, every lost language, every everything, so that there wouldn't be a person in the world that maybe I would encounter in my travels mm -hmm. that I couldn't communicate with right. or understand. You know, and it's about removing barriers between people and coming together because, you know what, I do think it's the only, only way we're going to, like fix the problems in this world, it's by talking to each other right. and understanding each other's sides and points of view. How can we do that if we don't understand the people in the rainforest or the traditional indigenous peoples that are living? How do we help them? How do we understand them and what they feel if we can't speak their language? And sometimes it's only 10 people speaking a dialect in the world. Right. So if I could have a superpower, it would be that. That's a good superpower. And I think that that would go a long way to help and solve um, some of the problems that we face. Yeah. As teach a, peace. As a society. Right. Yep, teach peace. Well, you're doing a good job with teaching peace. And, um, I try. As I, try. I, as, I, as I told you, um, we, are, we appreciate you very much for you coming well. on the show and, and for doing what you're doing. So Thank you. Yep. Um, if we could be of any help to you, well, you got my email number. Let me know. Yes. And, and likewise, simulate this. Likewise. Hold on, because I got something to say. Yes, um, yes. You go for it. Say your words. You got this. You got this. Um, Speak your words. It's okay. Just get it. Gaman ayo kinasper. Oh, there we go. Gaman ayo kinasper. Or gaman ayo hit the thing. Nice to meet you. Oh, thank gosh. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, am I happy Yay for, for Curtis. Yes, shout out. Shout out. If you want to know anything about the Icelandic language, reach out to our friend Franca Liccioni here, and she will teach you. Yes. Thank you very much for watching the show today, you guys. Take care of yourself. Yes. And each other. And each other. Yes. <laughs>